Hello, so welcome to the second Time for Hope video this week. We're only releasing two this week. At the start of the week, uh, we put one out from Neil Nash. Um, so we really hope you found it. I say start of the week, it was middle of the week, but you know, earlier in the week, we put one out from Neil Nash. We really hope that that has helped you and encouraged you. Uh, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's still on our YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and watch it. Today, it's another video. It's not an audio today, it's a video. It's about 13, 14 minutes from a familiar face at church from Jan Parks, uh, who leads with her husband Mike the Coffee Morning and the Wednesday Church ministry here. So I really hope the next 13 minutes really encourage you and bring you hope as Jan shares her time for hope. So grab yourself a cuppa and be prepared to have some hope shared. Hi everyone and a happy new year. Aren't we a blessed people? We have actually made it through 2020. Yippee! And I don't think that we will remember it with much fondness, do you? We've had enough of it, so glad to see the back of it. Um, Pastor Steve told us to introduce ourselves. So, my name is Jan Parks and along with my husband Mike, we head up Wednesday coffee morning and Wednesday Church at Riverside Ely. Or should I say, we did, until the pandemic hit. Um, but we were still being blessed because after the first lockdown last year, we were then allowed to meet in groups of six, um, socially distanced, of course, Steve, uh, and some of our lovely people opened up their gardens to us um, to go and meet up um, with six, uh, as a group of six. Um, so we actually morphed from Wednesday Church into Garden Church, where we were able to meet together two or three times a week to praise the Lord, listen to his word, pray, take communion and have fellowship together. And we, and we really had some blessed times. We were fortunate really to continue this into October and then because of the tier system and then the lockdown, we had to stop. Um, but that didn't stop us from keeping in touch by either phone, text, WhatsApp uh, or, what, or even the odd uh, video call. Um, and now we're actually doing um, just a small Bible study of inspirational women out of the Bible, trying to keep our brains and our spirits active by being in the Word. Um, and of course, ladies, giving us a little break from our husbands as well, isn't it? Now, I mean, I don't want to cast any aspersions because I have to say, I don't remember the last time I made a cup of tea or indeed the last time I put the hoover over. So they do have their good parts, don't they? Most definitely. But as someone did say to me a little while ago, it is quite nice when they go out for an hour and we can have a little break, isn't it? Uh, but we do uh, we do appreciate them, don't we? And we do bless them most of the time. <laughs> um, and um, I just wanted to tell you as well um, a little secret, you know. I don't know if you know that, but God actually trusts doctors. And how do I know that? Because by revelation from the Holy Spirit, there are two books in the Bible that were actually written by a doctor. And the first is Luke, and the second one is the Acts of the Apostles. So there was evidently a doctor there then that were contemporaries of the disciples that walked with Jesus. So if he did it then, do you think that he can do it again? And I'm sure he can. If we'd all been praying as we have, and if you weren't, you should have been, for an end to this pandemic, then do we believe that God can answer our prayers and indeed pop some revelational knowledge to doctors and scientists? I'm sure he can. So remember to get your jabs as soon as they are offered. And just before Pastor Steve edit, edits this last little bit, I just want to add a disclaimer by saying these are my own personal views and in no way reflect the views of Riverside Ely. Although we are looking forward to an exciting vaccine-filled 2021, God, I believe, is going to do 
great things. But I digress, as usual. We are talking about hope, a great word meaning different things. Hope can be sometimes perhaps a little bit of a flimsy word. Like my granddaughter at Christmas hoped that she was getting a new iPhone. I helped that too, actually. But unlike Mia, mine didn't materialise. But never mind, Ace, there's nothing the matter with my old one. Or like the taxi driver who got fired. And why, you ask me? Because the passengers didn't like it when he kept going the extra mile. Get it? Or like the frog, or when his beautiful car broke down, he got towed away. Get it? Towed. Sorry about that. But our hope isn't like that, is it? We have a glorious hope in our wonderful Saviour, Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 3 it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Isn't that great? I mean, we're going through tough times at the moment, and it says a little bit farther on in that book as well. Even though we are going through tough times then when it was written, and we are going through tough times then, our Lord always walks with us, doesn't he? Do not despair. We have a living hope. Somebody who loves us and gives us this love, this unconditional love. Do you, do you remember perhaps when you were a bit younger and um, uh, you do so? I mean, not that I don't think any of you were ever naughty, but I know my sister and I used to get um, pushed up the stairs by my mum uh, occasionally when we'd been arguing. And he used to think, oh, she doesn't love me anymore. But that's one thing that we never have to think about about the Lord, isn't it? Because he will never stop loving us. We might take a step back at various times, but he never does. But And he's always in the same place with his arms outstretched when we want to come back into those arms. And I know it can be a very worrying and an anxious time at this time. And don't think, I don't want anybody to have a guilt feeling because you think, oh, I should have more faith. Um, I, I shouldn't be feeling down at this time. But it, it, it's okay. It's okay not to be okay, if you know what I mean. Um, it can be a very worrying and an anxious time. Um, and in uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 6, he tells us this. Because the Lord knows everything that we're going to be going through. And he says to us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need our hearts and our minds to be guarded, don't we? Um, I always pray that over my family and especially over my uh, granddaughters and that the young people whose hearts and minds can be very fragile, can't they? And with all social media, they can easily be filled with things that aren't necessarily right and I'm sure aren't from the Lord. So we need to be really praying over them and, and to be standing on the word. There's nothing better than actually praying out loud the word. Write these verses down that speak to you and walk around and speak them out. And, and you're calling them into being, aren't you, by speaking them out. Nothing better than speaking out the word. Um, when we first started Wednesday Church, the Lord gave us a couple of verses in Romans 12, 1 and 2, which was telling us about transforming our mind and getting things from our hearts to our heads and from our heads to our hearts. And that's what it is. It's transforming your mind. And how do we do that? By looking in the word, by staying in the word, letting the power of the word get from here to here and from here to here. And really, um, it, it does help, you know, it, you're saying these things out and it does get from your head to your heart and it makes you feel better. And also I think as well, you know, that it, as God gives us a hope in him, 
he also has a help in us as well. And he tells us in 1 Peter 2 and verse 9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Wow, isn't that great? We, you and me, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, his own special people. So don't you think that we, if God has that help in us, we don't want to let him down, do we? We don't want to be the first generation that lets the Lord down. And that's something for us to think about. Always keeping your hearts when we're talking to people and when we're speaking and when we're, uh, when we're acting. Sometimes people, we may have said to people that, yeah, we're a Christian and we try to tell them all about Jesus. But if we're not living that life and if we're not acting out that Christ-like nature, then we're not going to be a good witness to them, are we? So, and I'm speaking to myself just as much as I'm speaking to you about this. Um, so, Father, we ju we just thank you. We can't thank you enough, Father, that our hope is in you. Uh, not only now, but our eternal hope. Thank you, Father, that you love us so much. We just love how you love us. Help us to be the kind of people who you are proud of. And just in closing, uh, one of the songs that we uh, really as a group of people love to sing, and this is one of my favourites, and it's called Jesus, Our Living Help. I'm going to read it to you because, believe me, you would not want me to sing it to you, not with my voice. So I'm going to read it, but the words are great. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living help. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Oh, thank you, Lord. Beautiful Saviour, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. We just claim that today, Lord. We claim that the grave has now claim on us because Jesus has won the victory. And because of that, we have the victory as well when we put our trust and our help in him. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, lovely people that I'm talking to now, never lose your hope. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Keep praying and praising and hope to see you again soon. God bless.